You're watching Bears Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Shout out to Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. The best men's grooming products can be found at Manscaped. Use promo code BEARS20 to get 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. All right, we got a Bears rumors roundup and later on some minicamp updates, so stay tuned for that. Are the Bears happy with Justin Fields? I would say so. Four smoking Jays. Everything they tell us, everything that's being reported is that the Bears themselves are very happy with Justin Fields and where they're at. Jeremy Fowler of ESPN wrote an article, kind of higher or higher, what's the word, hierarchy of the second-year quarterbacks. Justin Fields was fourth out of six based on league executives and coaches he talked to, but he did report in there that the Bears are happy with Fields' development. Uh, a couple of things he's worked on this offseason is tightening his release, working on his footwork, throwing on the run. Those have been some uh, points of emphasis for this Bears coaching staff for Justin Fields. Now, these executives that kind of help put this list together, and you know, I'll kind of rank them how they rank them in a moment, uh, said that, I don't know about uh, how the Bears have done around Justin Fields. Here's an AFC scout in Fowler's article, quote, God bless him and good luck. Good thing he can make things happen on his own long road ahead. So you've got that. NFC offensive coach said they aren't going to be great, but he's got big time ability. He'll be able to make plays. That's kind of the the realm I'm in. I don't think this team's going to be great, but he's got real upside. And I think he'll make some plays for this team. And I think something that continues to be overlooked uh, by national media, coaches around the league, stuff like that, is I think this new coaching staff will help Fields. Do they need more around him? I, I think so. I think the O-line needs, needs to be better. You could probably add another receiver. Those are valid points. But I think coaching and, you know, different schemes should help Fields play better. How much? We'll have to wait and find out this season. Now I want to know, does Justin Fields have enough around him? And I'm talking skill player-wise, not coaching, skill player. Skill players, offensive line, that sort of thing. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Does Justin Fields have enough help around him? You guys decide in the comments section. You look at what he does have around him, or at least a couple of the positions that people would suggest uh, he needs more at. Receivers, we've talked about it. Darnell Mooney, really good player. Pringle and Bayless Jones should contribute, but maybe they're being asked to do too much. The depth, eh, questionable guys with St. Brown, Newsom, David Moore, Tajay Sharp, Pettis, etc. Obviously, the offensive line, which we'll talk about a little bit more today. This depth chart is very loose, especially with what happened at minicamp today. You could certainly add a guard and potentially a tackle to this unit as well. It's fair to question the pieces around fields. Uh, I fully understand that. I, I've questioned it a little bit. But what I've consistently said is it's you know, it's May, now it's June, uh, it's early. Uh, you know, if you get into week one and you have this exact same uh, group around him and the Bears get clobbered by the Niners in week one, then we can talk more like, yeah, Ryan Poles probably should have done a little more, even though this is a long-term play for him. Uh, I think those things are valid, but I do think Justin Fields will be able to play better, and I do believe uh, I do believe Fowler when he says, you know, people told him the Bears are happy uh, with him at quarterback. Now, what was interesting is execs around the league ranked the second-year quarterbacks like this. Trevor Lawrence, one. Uh, Mac Jones, two. Zach Wilson, three. Justin Fields, four. Trey Lance, five. And Davis Mills, six. And apparently, four through six were very close. Uh, so, not really around the league do uh, people believe Justin Fields could be the best quarterback from that class. I think he could be. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out over the next couple of years. Now, be sure to subscribe to Chicago Bears. Now, if you love the Bears, uh, we've got you covered, uh, whether it's good news, bad news, juicy rumors, uh, other stuff going on around this team, minicamp updates, which is what's happening right now. Hit that big red button and subscribe. We'll have you covered on a daily basis here on this channel. Sometimes multiple videos today or per day. Yesterday, two videos. Today, we had a video earlier. We're going live now. Probably have a video later. We got you covered. YouTube.com slash Bears now. All right. Uh, this is interesting. Kind of stepping away from minicamp stuff. We'll get into more minicamp specific updates in a moment. Could the Bears sign Baker Mayfield or Jimmy Garoppolo if they were to get released? I think this is fake news. I don't think this really makes sense. Now, the origin of this story isn't from a reporter, but rather from Vegas. Bet Online released some odds for Jimmy Garoppolo and Baker Mayfield 
uh, talking about where they could play. Now, reports have been out there that NFL executives believe Jimmy G and Baker could and possibly will eventually get cut. Uh, that caused Bet Online to release odds for each quarterback's next team, and the Bears were listed for both players, not as the top team to get one of these guys, but they were on the list. You look at Baker Mayfield's week one odds in terms of where he'll play. Carolina, a heavy favorite at plus 100. Uh, those odds have probably increased after reports that have come today uh, with the Texans at plus 250, Seattle plus 400, Tampa plus 600, and then you look all the way down. Bears at plus 2,000. So obviously not great odds to get Baker uh, as he'll look to want to start somewhere. This was a little more interesting, though. Jimmy Garoppolo, Bears' fifth best odds, but plus 1,200, not crazy. Like, those aren't super long odds uh, in terms of uh, someone landing somewhere. They're not great odds, but they're not crazy long uh, either. I think this makes no sense. I don't know where this is coming from. I guess you just have to get more than a couple teams, and only, a, you know, Carolina, Seattle, Houston maybe are teams that could be looking for a starting quarterback, although I don't even think the Texans make sense. It makes more sense to play uh, Davis Mills this year. Signing one of these guys makes no sense. I'll explain why in just a second. But shout out first to Manscaped for sponsoring today's show because the Platinum Package that they dropped, it's a great deal with great products for 52% off. You know why? It comes with all of their best men's grooming tools, the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker, which takes care of your nose and ears hairs. Uh, also, the Ultra Premium Collection, which has shampoo and conditioner, body wash, body spray, all that good stuff. You get the boxers, the travel kit, uh, crop gel, crop exfoliator. You get it all, basically all their top products. For just $123.99, uh, the 20% off from $154.99 with promo code BEARS20, but you're asking, okay, where's the 52% off? Well, if you buy all of these products separately, individually, it's over $250. You get it for $123.99 in this bundle for a limited time only. Just go to manscaped.com, use promo code BEARS20, get the platinum package. It's a great Father's Day present. So for you uh, ladies watching, if you want to get it for your husband or for your dad, uh, for you uh, you know teens watching college, you want to get it for your dad, that'll help as well. Manscaped.com, promo code is BEARS20. Back to this whole Jimmy G or Baker possibly ended up in Chicago. Unless Justin Fields were to suffer a serious injury, there's no chance this happens, right? Because what is the point of signing Jimmy Garoppolo or Baker Mayfield to back up Justin Fields? Trevor Simeon is a more than capable backup quarterback. Uh, bringing in Baker or Jimmy G while Justin Fields is healthy only muddies the waters. That does not make sense. Simeon's a serviceable backup. If Fields misses a couple games here and there, he can start. Now, obviously, if Justin Fields had a serious injury in training camp and one of those guys were available and you wanted to try and compete this year, yes, J Jimmy Garoppolo and Baker Mayfield are better than Trevor Simeon. I'm not saying Simeon's better. I'm saying that bringing a guy like that in here when you're trying to focus on Justin Fields and his development makes no sense. It doesn't make sense for the Bears, and it really doesn't make sense for Mayfield or Garoppolo who feel like they are starting caliber quarterbacks in the National Football League. Now, just in a vacuum, I want to know. Let's say you do have to roll with one of these guys at quarterback. Who would you rather have? Who do you think is the better option? Type JG for Jimmy Garoppolo. Type BM for Baker Mayfield. I think I would go Jimmy G. He's won a lot of games, albeit uh, at times the Niners have won in spite of him. But I think he's got better leadership attributes. Baker Mayfield's got real question marks in that department. JG for Jimmy G or BM for Baker Mayfield. All right, uh, next up is Robert Quinn. Could he get traded? Of course, he uh, did not show the mandatory minicamp today. I'm going to elevate this to three smoking Jays. Now, that doesn't mean it's a full 75%. You know, you think of the four smoking Jays. 0% for fake news, 25% for one, 50 for two. It doesn't really necessarily work that way. But there's got to be a little momentum here, right? And I've said for a while, two smoking Jays, it could go either way. He's not attending Bears minicamp, uh, according to Ian Rappaport, and that was you know, proven today. He dropped the report earlier, so I wanted to give him credit. Um, the possibility of a trade at least has increased in the last 24 hours, right? I mean, I don't know what the percentages are, but for him to not be there, especially when Matt Eberflus came out today and said, we're not going to talk about guys not here. We expected him to be here. Ryan Poles will take care of that. The Bears fully expected him to show up, and he did not. So... 
Uh, take that for what it's worth. Now, Robert Quinn is obviously a guy who's been connected to trade rumors because new regime, getting older, had a great year last year. He already traded Khalil Mack. Uh, it was already a possibility, but I think those odds have gone up a little bit uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, he's not attending minicamp. And two, the Bears have shown they want to get younger. Robert Quinn's going to be playing on his 32-age season this year. You've got young guys that can play. Travis Gibson, Aquadi Muhammad. Uh, Mario Edwards, Dominic Robinson, Charles Snowden could get an opportunity if you traded Robert Quinn. I'm not saying you should trade him just to play these guys. I'm saying maybe if he wants out, wants to contend, and the Bears think they can get something decent for him, maybe that's just best to rip the Band-Aid off. I, I don't know if he's frustrated or not, but I will say this. It's pretty clear Eberflus and the Bears expected him to be there today. Will Robert Quinn get traded? Let me know. Type T for trade, type K for keep. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Will Robert Quinn get traded? Now, if you want uh, further analysis of him holding out and skipping minicamp, we dropped a video earlier today on the channel. So subscribe, go to the videos tab, check that out. Robert Quinn not attending minicamp. We have full details, and I have more analysis of what that could mean for Quinn and the Bears moving forward. So go check that out, youtube.com slash bears now. All right, some other minicamp updates. We'll kind of go one by one here. Jalen Johnson, pick six off of Justin Fields. I don't know if this is an update or just something that happened. Uh, I think the main takeaway of this is the Bears defense is ahead of the offense right now, and that really shouldn't be surprising, and I don't even think it necessarily should be concerning. We've heard about the offense having good days. Now, I would like to see the offense bounce back tomorrow. You don't want them to lose all three days of minicamp, but – I think it's fair to say the defense is ahead of the offense right now, which isn't a surprise. Sure, it's a new defensive scheme, but a lot of those key players are still on that side of the football. Bears are installing a whole new offense. That's not surprising. I might actually be more concerned if the offense was ahead right now. So Jalen Johnson, pick six of fields. If anything, hey, Johnson's in, the, in a groove now. Strong finished OTAs, strong start to minicamp. Number two, Dakota Dozier carted off. Uh, got carted off while he was working at left guard with the second team offense, but he's been a contender to start at right guard with Sam Mustafer. Uh, here's the deal. I don't know the significance of the injury, uh, but regardless, even if he's fully healthy, you need a right guard. You don't have one. Mustafer cannot be the answer. Dozier, no. You know, Zach Thomas, a rookie, okay. Like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. You got to go out and get a right guard, in my opinion. Uh, unless you're going to kick in Tevin Jenkins or Larry Borum, we'll kind of discuss that a little bit more in a sec, but uh, that would be the only exception, in my opinion, uh, in terms of uh, the right guard spot, because you got to get better there. Uh, Kyler Gordon, not practicing. He was on the exercise bike. Uh, Matt Eberflus declined to comment. He is not required to, to discuss injuries right now. He did indicate, I would say, that it's not serious, serious, like – He'll be at training camp, so maybe he won't practice the next couple of days, but I do think he'll be out there at training camp. Obviously, if we get to training camp and he's not, that is a different conversation, but uh, he was not out there, so did want to mention that. And then, final one here. I think this might be the most significant of everything that happened at day one of uh, minicamp. Braxton Jones and Larry Borum were the starting tackles. Jones on the left side, Borum on the right side. This feels at least somewhat significant because – that, that was the combination that finished OTAs, which meant Tevin Jenkins was working with the second team. Um, it's June. I do want to emphasize that. Matt Eberflew said it OTAs, and he said it again today. They're still working on different combinations to try and find the, the best five. But maybe Tevin Jenkins isn't the answer. And that would be disappointing because I was high on him coming out. You know, I like the pick by Ryan Pace trading up to get him in the second round. If it doesn't work out, I, I won't blame Pace for that necessarily because I thought he could have gone round one. He fell to early mid-round two. But for him to not be getting first-team reps, Braxton Jones, a fifth-round rookie, is working at left tackle? Ugh, I don't know. I, you know, that's, that's a little worrisome. So I think that is the biggest takeaway from day one of Bears minicamp.